54-year-old with a um, PSC cataract. You can see the pupils uh, fairly well dilated. It's relatively strong red reflex. When you start with the paracentesis, you really need a second instrument. I like to hold the second instrument against the globe here as a counter-traction. Now we're going to uh, put in some air here. Now that's always a little troubling having those small bubbles. I like to make sure I have enough air. The issue with tripan is people put too much in. And so I just put a few drops in the center if possible. And I actually paint it on the surface. So I just wipe it across the surface. That's it. And then it doesn't need to be there very long. Just irrigate until the blue is gone. The bubble's going to keep us from hitting the capsule. So I go all the way across. And then I slowly fill up. I usually move it back and forth to get the bubble to come out uniformly. And now we have a nice deep chamber. Here I go relatively vertically to the surface. Once I get in, I flatten it out. I wiggle forward about halfway along here. Then I go vertical again and enter. So we go, I like to start in the center. And I like to go radial. So we enter here in the center, go radial and then lift up a little bit to get that turned over. And now we go to our Utrata forceps. I like to re-grab every two to three clock hours. So pull a few clock hours, re -grab. see how I keep this turned over. I'm not grabbing here right next to it. I grab about a millimeter away. Now see how this is actually not coming with the rest of the capsule. I usually free this up. And then I re-grab. Again, I'm leaving it turned over the whole time. And again, I'm re-grabbing. You can turn your flap around. Now, when we go to the hydrodissection, what you want to lift up on the capsule. Go in, lift up, push hard. You can see we're getting, there it goes. The lens is now pushing up against the capsule. I want to decompress it. So I decompress it at the edge. Do you see that? It just decompressed. Now we want to rotate the lens and make sure it spins. So here we're going to spin it. Didn't spin so easy. I'm going to try again. No. Nope. So then I switch direction. Okay, there it goes. So now it's rotating. So we have a pre faco setting, pre-chop here. And um, we're going to go in first with our second instrument. This is our chopper. And here we go. So we're all set here. We're going to do the pre facos Just remove this material on top. So now we're ready for sculpting. Again, just uh, keep this still here. Okay, and again, we're going to go until we're looking for a color change or where we feel we're at least uh, three down. So that's pretty deep. I usually push the nucleus peripherally and rotate. I'm just using one instrument. I'm not doing two. Some people do a two instrument spin. So I'm going to push this out and rotate. So usually when I do three, I like to see if I can crack. It saves time. So we're good there. It's cracked on that one. So we're going to rotate.
If you have a good depth and good length, you can easily crack. So these are all cracking very well. And the last one here. Okay, so now they've all cracked. We're going to move to the next uh, quadrant removal. And what we're going to do is, um, again, we're going to look for the smaller piece. So I'm, as I grab it and pull, wiggle it out, see how I'm wiggling out, this breaks the cortical fibers. And then we rotate, just to get rid of those pieces. Move to the next piece, same thing. Wiggle it out. Okay, we got one piece left. Again, not much cortex. So you usually just turn your tip to change the fluidics. So this patient had asteroid hylosis. We can see that now. Asteroid hylosis is very deceptive because it makes it hard to judge depth. So we're going to make a separate paracentesis site for our bimanual. Ideally, we would, we would want to do this ahead of time. So I'm going to be a, a little careful. So we have irrigation on. This is our IA now. So again, with this, you can really do a great job of doing tangential removal. Sometimes we remove the cells on the back of the anterior capsule doing here. And usually we take this out first and then we take this out. So very nice. We'll go ahead and put the scholastic into the anterior chamber. And usually I try to get under the bag here before I inflate it. The asteroid makes it very hard to appreciate the posterior capsule. Already hard enough to see, but now it's very hard to see. Uh, again, I want to hold the injector vertically. See how vertical it is? Uh, then you can just push straight down. You twist it in. As soon as, it's, as soon as it's in, you can flatten it out a little bit and then inject, inject the lens. We can use anything, but again, we want to rotate this in. I like the haptics a little horizontal, prevents or reduces negative dysphotopsias for the patient. So again, we want to go in our little paracentesis here. We want to remove that viscoelastic, which we can easily do now. For this case, again, we want to first hydrate the paracentesis we created. See how tangential I am doing my wound hydration? Have it pointing directly into the stroma. You get much better hydration. And now we're going to check our wound. Again, remember, we don't want the needle ever pointing at the eyeball. When it line it up like this, inject below. Thank you.